We've made several videos about the Nikon Z50. Today is the full review, and we are sharing all of our conclusions so far, but this will not be our final Z50 video. You will be seeing it in future videos because it is a camera that has intrigued us, both for the price point, but also the capabilities. And it's presently a close second behind our Sony Alpha 7 R4 as the camera that we're most likely to run out the door with. Fortunately, there's two of us, so recently we've just been bringing both with us, with a few fun exceptions. Let's get a few things out of the way. The Z50 is a Nikon Z mount mirrorless interchangeable lens camera. It's tiny. It has an APS-C or DX sensor versus its big brothers, the Z6 and Z7, which are FX or full frame. The Z50 does not have in-body image stabilization. And while it has 4K video, there is a significant crop. And without IBIS, it's tougher to use handheld for video. Although we'll show some examples where the electronic stabilization that it does have for video did the job nicely. If you would not consider an APS-C camera in the age of relatively inexpensive full-frame cameras, or if lack of IBIS is a deal breaker for you, then the Z50 is not your camera. I will say this though, we have been told right here in the comments on our own videos that you absolutely cannot shoot in low light with APS-C sensors, nor can you get quality bokeh for portraits and creative effects, nor can you shoot wide angles with APS-C? And all of that is just false. <laughs> when we hear that, we're hearing from someone who, quite frankly, needs to go back and refine their skills and their technique. Are there mental adjustments that we're doing when shooting APS-C? Sometimes yes, but generally we're just using it like any other camera. But I believe that with technique and a little creativity, you can use most any camera for most situations you will find yourself in. In fact, not long ago, we shot these portraits with a Nikon P1000, which has a much smaller sensor. I see a blurred background there. The Z50 is small. This is the promise of mirrorless. Less stuff in the camera, allowing everything to be smaller. And the lens mount can be much closer to the sensor. For Nikon and other legacy DSLR brands, this meant a new mount, and new lenses, while allowing compatibility with legacy DX and FX lenses with the FTZ adapter, which at this point in the Z-mount lens, current releases and future roadmap, we view as mandatory equipment if you want the flexibility that you may be used to with the mature DSLR and F-mount lineup. In terms of flexibility and capability, like focus modes, exposure, 14-bit RAW, function buttons, and everything else that defines the user interface and flexibility of the camera itself, the Z50 is nearly identical to the Z6 and Z7. If you've used either of those full frame variants, you're right at home with the Z50. You are missing the joystick on the Z50, which is handy, but very few Nikon DSLRs have had this capability. So if you're like us, you've used the four way much longer than the newer joystick control. And the reason that I'm talking about this is that it would be easy to say that the Nikon Z7 is like the D850 and the Z50 is like a D3000 or D5000 series camera. That comparison does not hold up though. While the Z7 is not quite a D850, they have very definite differences. The analogy for the Z50 would be the battle proven D500. Really the Z50 is a shrunken Z7 and it shows in a lot of ways. The Z50 and the Z7 have a virtually identical pixel density. If you are shooting wildlife with a Z7 and cropping in closer to a DX frame size, you're working with the same level of detail on the Z50 as the Z7. We're not pretending here that the Z50 is a full frame 47 megapixel sensor, but in telephoto use cases, you're really not losing much, but you'd be doing it with a much less expensive camera. For wide angles, we did use the super compact 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, which we purchased with our Z50. I really like this versus the F-mount DX kit lens focal length, which historically has been 18 to 55. But while there is solid flexibility on the wide end of the kit lens, the compact design has led to the widest aperture at 50 millimeters being F6.3. 
this is going to have far more negative impacts on your low light abilities and bokeh than the sensor itself. And perhaps that is where some of the criticisms of APS-C come from. Maybe not from the size of the sensor itself, but due to the lenses that are typically marketed and packaged with APS-C cameras. We absolutely leaned on our other Z-mount lenses and our F-mount lenses with the Z50. The old Nikon 17-55 f2.8 DX is suddenly in style again, at least in our household. And we shot it quite often along with the Z50 and also our 14 to 30 millimeter ultra wide Z mount lens, which turns into a nice wide to mid range lens on the Z50, maintaining an F4 throughout all of the focal lengths. We realize that many buyers of the Z50 will get one or both kit lenses and call it a day, and that's fine. But like with all interchangeable lens cameras, the true strength lies in the lenses for what you like to shoot. We love our wildlife, so the 200 to 500 millimeter f5.6 f mount was on the Z51 moment, and then the legendary 70 to 200 f2.8. And for us, it would be using those kit lenses exclusively that would hold the Z50 back. Overall, we are surprised but feel very fortunate that Nikon put as much capability into the Z50 as they have. For purposes of market segmentation, they could have lowered the frames per second down from 11, dumbed down the autofocus and tracking capabilities, or found other ways to make the Z50 inferior. The bottom line is that the Z50 has the DNA of the Z7, but with Z6 resolution in a cropped sensor. Now a note on IBIS. We love it for video and it is helpful with stills. There's good news and bad news here. As we said before, the Z50 does not have in-body image stabilization, but nor does our D500 or D810 or the D850 or D5 or D750 or to make it easier, every Nikon interchangeable lens Nikon camera besides the Z6 and Z7. We've lived without it for a long time, and we have our VR lenses that work great with the Z50, and both DX kit lenses have VR. Again though, if IBIS is the holy grail for you, then you won't want a Z50. In fact, it was my biggest concern about the camera when we ordered it, but as it turns out, we liked the electronic VR, which is available for video. Its biggest strength seems to be making stationary handheld video look like it was shot on a tripod. For handheld video on the run, the Z50's EVR did not hold up to our standards. You can see here that there is a lot of warping and twitching on the video image while Raymond was hiking forward with the camera in his hand. For the budding run and gun videographer on a budget, the Z6 with its IBIS may be the best Nikon option. Overall, we consider the Z50 to be a shooter's camera. What do I mean by that? It is super easy to shoot with, for one, but it will reward skill because it does have the options and flexibility of the Z7. Only in terms of run and gun video did we feel restricted by any capabilities of the camera and never because of the sensor size. One other thing worth mentioning about video capabilities is that we have been shooting 10-bit video with our Z6 and Z7 through our Atomos Ninja. And while the Z50 works fine with the Ninja, it does not support 10-bit output, nor is it eligible for the new 12-bit video upgrade being offered to owners of the Z6 and Z7. The Z50 actually puts us in an interesting Z-mount dilemma. Within days of receiving the Z50, we packaged our Z6 and posted it for sale on eBay. And we sold it, we thought. As can happen, we had a non-paying bidder, leaving the Z6 in our hands, ready to relist. But we waited and re-evaluated our lineup, and we're pretty sure that our D500 is the camera in our collection that should be the most nervous right now. We'd love to keep it all, but the stuff is expensive, right? So tough decisions sometimes need to be made. And the Z50 seems to be more than filling the shoes of the D500 for us, which was for fast action and wildlife. Now let me ask you this. Has the Z50 put you in your own dilemma, whether you're an F-mount shooter looking at mirrorless or maybe a Z-mount owner looking at a second body? Maybe you have another brand entirely, but you're looking at this Z50. 
let us know down in the comments. In the meantime, we will keep you updated on our experiences with the Z50, the Z6, the Z7, the Sony Alpha 7 R4, and anything else we can get our hands on. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more from us. And thank you for watching.